Hi everybody and welcome to Simply Scuba. So, hoses. Uh, until someone invests in a hoseless regulator, we're going to need a variety of different hoses for our scuba diving ways, but there are a few alternatives and one very common pitfall that some divers fall into. So there are three basic parts to a hose and of course they come in different lengths. And in this video I'm going to explain all of your choices so if you're new to scuba diving then you can better pick the right hose. Let's take a closer look at the hoses that we use. So the male end is going to be the end of the hose that screws into your first stage, the metal bit that actually attaches to your tank. So you have three choices here and they're all different sizes, so there's no way that you can screw the wrong hose into the wrong port and do any damage. So high pressure hoses are the easiest because there's only one fitting and that's 7 16 inch. Uh, all high pressure ports on a first stage will have a 7 16 inch thread and all gauges and transmitters they'll all be 7 16 inch too. So all you need to do for a new pressure gauge uh, to get a new hose or a hose for your transmitter is to just choose the right length basically. With low pressure hoses though, you have two choices. By far the most common choice is 3 8 of an inch. So if you're replacing a regulator hose for a second stage or a low pressure inflator hose for a BCD or your dry suit, then nine times out of 10, it'll be 3 8 inch. The other choice is half inch, but these are quite rare and they're only on a very select few first stages. Half inch fittings are substantially larger than 3 eighths of an inch and they do deliver a greater airflow, but you do only find these on a very few first stages. The basic way to tell is you can basically measure it, but if you remove the hose from your first stage and there's like a little tube on the inside of the port, then that's probably going to be half inch. Otherwise, it's going to be three eighths. If you are ever unsure, you can literally measure the size of the thread um, to basically confirm uh, sort of what size it is, or you can sort of um, sort of confirm exactly which size you need um, by basically asking either our customer services or the manufacturer themselves. Just be very specific on sort of which port and which first stage that you have, uh, and then it's pretty easy to find out what size thread you should use. The other end of the hose that attaches to your second stage or your BCD inflator, the SPG, this is called the female end of the hose. As I said earlier, high pressure hoses are easy, there's only one fitting. Uh, the only thing that you need to remember is that the female end will need a swivel pin on the inside to seal against the SPG or the transmitter. Without a swivel pin, air is just going to leak out, so make sure that you have one with your pressure gauge or your transmitter, or you do you buy one as an extra. Low pressure hoses have a much larger variety. For second stages, you want a 9 16 inch thread. 99% of regulator second stages out there are 9 16 but do double check. There are some second stages like the Apex Flight and some Poseidon second stages that have unique threads. So do be careful if your second stage connection doesn't look exactly like this. Uh, you might have a slightly different nut, but it should be this general size um, so yeah do double check because you might need an adapter for low pressure inflators uh, for BCDs and dry suits and stuff there are three common quick disconnects so DIN not to be confused with the DIN thread on the first stage. Uh, they have the same name, it's just the Deutsche Industry Normal. Um, the most common quick disconnect fitting that you find on most BCDs uh, will be like this. They're fairly universal, um, but they're called DIN. And sometimes you'll come across a combination that doesn't quite activate properly um, between the, uh, the actual inflator and the inflator hose. It's all about the length of the Schrader valve, this little thing on the inside um, and the length on the knife, this part of the um, sort of the inflator. If you can try to stick to the same brand hose to your BCD or dry suit or whatever it is, then they're more likely to match up. But sometimes you can come across a combination that just don't line up and they're not quite long enough. 
Some inflators do have different fittings though, usually for greater airflow. So C-Gen and Buddy are the most common. Uh, so this is C-Gen. Uh, it's a little bit longer than a standard DIN fitting and it looks slightly different. Uh, Buddy is much larger and these are typically used for inflators with a built-in octo, something that needs a better airflow so that you can literally breathe through it. Most BCDs and dry suits will just have the standard DIN fitting, but if the nozzle looks a little different in any way, then you might need a special coupling like a C-Gen or a Buddy. You can also get some hoses that have a built-in swivel. Um, these, unfortunately, are they do come under the, the unique fitting. So if you come uh, or if you buy a regulator with a second stage that has a built-in swivel joint, then unfortunately you can't just fit any uh, sort of replacement hose to it. Most times you actually have to have that swivel joint removed and replaced with exactly the same thing. So it can be tricky to find replacement hoses out outside of the, the standard length. For the body of the hose, you have a few choices. The standard are rubber hoses. These are tough, smooth, and slightly negatively buoyant, so they sink when they're under the water. The smooth coating is quite nice if you have the hose against your skin anywhere, particularly around your neck if you have like a long hose primary donate setup. Uh, not too colorful, these. Uh, they're typically black or yellow, and that's about it, really. Uh, but rubber hoses are the tough, heavyweight option. A lighter alternative that's quickly becoming the standard on quite a lot of new regulators is braided hoses. Braided hoses don't have the heavy outer rubber shell, but they are still pretty strong and they're nice and flexible as well. They are lighter, so they can shave a few grams off of your gear if you're traveling a lot, and they do come in a whole rainbow of different colors, so you can really start to personalize your own gear. The downside to braided hoses are that they're quite light. I know I mentioned that as a pro, but it does mean that uh, braided hoses can float when they're under the water, especially when they're longer lengths, which makes them a bit more tricky in the water to root, and the braided outer shell is quite coarse as well. So if you have one on your neck, that sort of braided uh, sort of outer shell can start to rub and irritate your skin. Braided high pressure hoses are very skinny, and I'm Mean super skinny compared to most hoses it's perfectly fine high pressure hoses don't need the high calibers for airflow if anything they want to be as small as possible on the inside so they will be very very tiny so don't be surprised if you order one online and something like this turns up it's perfectly fine the third choice is relatively new and is basically a new version of rubber hoses, uh, but they use a smooth polyurethane instead of rubber as a outer shell, so they're a bit heavier, so they're going to sink, and they're smooth, so they're basically rubber hoses, just instead of rubber, they're polyurethane. The length of the hose denotes its primary use. So hoses range anything from short 15 centimeter long hoses to long like two meter hoses. You can of course get longer hoses, but we don't tend to use them while scuba diving. They're more specialist either for sort of surface supply or something around the dive center. Measuring hoses is typically end to end, including the metal fittings, uh, not just the flexible uh, sort of hose section, but not every hose manufacturer measures this way, so do be double check careful. Um, but yeah, if you're measuring up a hose, it's typically the whole length of the entire thing. If you need to know what length hose you need for one particular use, all you basically need is a tape measure or a piece of string, basically. Put your gear on and try and get someone to trace the path of the hose and measure how long it needs to be from the first stage to wherever you want it to go. Over your shoulders, around your body as well, so you get the true length and then just buy the length of hose that's closest to what you need. There are several standard lengths for different uses and setups, but you can always get a custom length hose, um, but they're not cheap and they do take some time to make, so they're not really an option that a lot of people go for. But if you desperately, desperately want a specific size hose, it can be made, it's just not that easy. 
So 15 centimeter tends to be the shortest hose that you'll find. These are typically for submersible pressure gauges on stage tanks and transmitters where you don't want a lot of hose. Uh, so they have a bit of movement, but, um, but not too much excess hose. And then you do get some sort of mid range hoses, but the next length up is usually around the 50 to 75 centimeters. These are your standard lengths for your primary second stages or inflator hoses. Uh, it just depends on where your first stage is going to be on your back and how much slack you basically want. 90 to 100 centimeter hoses. These are typically for short hose alternate second stages and low pressure hoses for your dry suit. You typically want them a little bit longer because if it's for your dry suit, it's got to go down a bit and around your body. The same for a short hose octo. Then you tend to jump up to one and a half meters and 2.1 meter long hoses. These are for long hose primary donate setups. The, the length of the hose is a very personal thing and depends on your setup. If you're diving singles, if you're diving twins, how you route your hoses, how long your inflator hose is over your left hand shoulder, there isn't a hard fast list of this length is for this use. And that's why there's such a wide choice of hose lengths which is why you need to measure the length that you actually need whilst you're wearing it but don't be tempted to go for a longer hose just for the sake of it uh, because the excess slack will just become a literal flappy snag hazard uh, so you want your hoses to be as streamlined and like body fitted as possible so they're not going to snag on anything as you swim through and there are hoses uh, the main thing is is that you avoid the wrong fittings a lot of divers see the half inch fitting and they see that the half inch is a bit cheaper than the three eighths but they end up returning the half inch because they don't have a half inch port on their regulator that's the usual pitfall because they don't know the difference as I said, braided hoses are quickly becoming the norm and quite a lot of regulators come with braided hoses as standard. Um, you'll hear a lot of MeFlex or MyFlex, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, MeFlex is probably the best known brand for braided hoses, but not all braided hoses are MeFlex, if that makes sense. It's the old sort of Hoover analogy. Um, but what do you like to dive? Do you like to keep it nice and colorful and light with braided hoses or do you prefer a standard like heavy black rubber hose? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the Simply Scuba channel and let us know what you want to learn about next. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.